All right, so at the beginning of this course, we mentioned that uh, factorization is a hard problem and we uh, showed that if we do it by trial division method, you know, when you have a number n and try to check if any odd number divides it, this is actually an exponential time algorithm. So question is, in practice, do we have anything better than exponential time algorithms? The answer is yes. I mean, instead of, uh, we don't have any polynomial time algorithm. If we had one, we could break RSA instantly. But instead we have sub-exponential time algorithms. This is why actually the key size of uh, RSA is large. Okay, like 3072 bits. So one way of factorization is the Polish row algorithm. Polish row algorithm is a general algorithm which you can use in many different scenarios. So let me first introduce you to the general case. So given a finite set S and you have a map F from S to S, and you have a, you choose a starting point X0 in this S. So assume that this set has R elements, okay? So you have a function F taking the I input and providing you the I plus one uh, value. We are searching for a collision. In other words, Xi equals to Xj at some point. Okay, you can use it for really hash collisions, but in general, we are you can also use it for like integer factorization and so on. So one way to find a collision is as follows. You start with an x0, calculate fx0, which gives you x1, then calculate f1 to obtain x2 and so on and store them all. So once you store this value, you can compare if you know if they are equivalent, but you know, it will take some time. So idea is as follows, just check, uh, once you calculate the new value, xj plus one, just check if it is equal to any one of the previous ones. Of course, you know, checking one by one, what you can do is to sort them and search them. And sorting and searching algorithms will be really fast when the data is sorted. But of course, since we are uh, storing all of these values, then, you know, this is a uh, memory intensive algorithm. So if you want to find a like hash collision like this, you have to store a lot of values. Like for, for instance, SHA, uh, SHA-1, you have to store at least two to the 80 values like this. So how to reduce memory? If you only check whether Xi equals to X2i at each iteration, we will eventually find a collision. So this might be counterintuitive, but the idea is as follows. So you, so you start with X0, you obtain x1, x2, x3, x4. And if there's a collision at some point, one of these values should come to back to it. So this is why we call it the row algorithm because it looks like the Greek letter row. Okay. So instead of storing any values, you just check at double steps if it is equal to the previous one. So at some point you should have, because once you start this calculating these values and obtain this row uh, picture, you will be inside this circle. And at some point, xi would be equal to x2i. So actually, you are reducing memory, but increasing the time complexity. So this is actually a time memory trade-off. This algorithm has complexity O square root of r. So r is the, recalled that the number of elements in this set. So actually, this determines the, uh, this is the reason why we actually double the key size in elliptic curve cryptography and some other public key cryptographic algorithms due to the this square root. Okay. So how you can use it? So this is still a, a exponential, by the way, not a sub-exponential. But you can also use it for factorization. So assume P is a non-trivial factor of N. Choose an easily evaluated map F from Zn to Zn. For example, it can be something simple like x squared plus one. Choose a starting point x0. Here, a collision will mean xi equal to xj modulo p. But if this is the case, this means p divides xi minus xj. But we also have p divides n because p is recalled that uh, we chose n in RSA as p times q. This is why p divides n. So, P divides this and P divides this. This would mean that uh, P divides greatest common divisor of Xi minus Xj and N. So in practice, this actually would mean that P equals to this greatest common divisor. 
So compute xi, x2i for each i and check whether the greatest common divisor of this value and n is different than one or n. This is how the factorization works when you use the polar draw algorithm. So this was for you know a general case in polar draw, you are trying to find a collision. Here, the collision would mean that they are equivalent modulo p. Here, you, this way you can you know use it to check if it is a uh, if it is a, a divisor of n by this calculation. So this way you know you would obtain p. Okay, so if n equals the p and q, where p and q are two primes of the same size, then Polar's row algorithm can find a non-trivial factor of n in all square root of n to the power four steps. This is why in RSA only two primes are used and they are close to each other. As you can see, if you have more primes, then this four will be something like six or eight and so on. This is why we try to choose two primes that are somewhat close to each other, but not too close. If you choose very uh, close prime numbers, it becomes easier to break. But of course, these are this is still uh, uh, exponential algorithm. We actually have uh, sub-exponential time complexity algorithms, which allows us to factorize integers. These are like Dixon's method, which use random squares. Birrell-Hart Morrison algorithm, continuous fraction expansion, quadratic C method, and uh, more importantly, number field C method. So for these algorithms, due to their running times, we have to choose uh, RSA uh, keys larger than you know elliptic curves or ISA AES, sorry, and so on. because recall that in block ciphers we can use 128 bit keys when using AES. But if you want to have the similar uh, security, due to Polar's row algorithm here, your secret key should be at least double of it, which is 256. So this is why in elliptic curves, we will use you know keys of size 256. But uh, in RSA, due to this, you actually have to double that too. But due to sub-exponential time algorithms, uh, doubling or multiplying with four is still not enough. This is why in order to have 128-bit security, you should use RSA 3072. Not a lot of people know this because in practice, people are still using RSA 2048 and think that it is secure. It actually is equivalent to having 112-bit security. And if something goes wrong, if your random numbers are not random and so on, then it can, it is easy to break. So, you know, instead of using RSA 2048 and hoping to have uh, long-term security, you should use a better algorithm. 